In this episode of the Locked On NBA Big Board Podcast, I am going to share my thoughts on why I believe Serbian point guard Nikola Topic has a chance to be the top pick in the 2024 NBA Draft. The last episode was about Alex Sar. In this episode, I'm going to explain why I believe there is a good chance that Topic could be the first player to shake Adam Silver's hand on June 26th. Stay tuned. Big shout out to each and every person that has made the Locked On NBA Big Board podcast your first listen of the day. I am your host, Rafael Barlow, the director of scouting for NBA Big Board and the founder of NBA Draft Junkies. Now, if you're not subscribed, please subscribe to the channel. I'm not sure what you're waiting on, but please subscribe. I want you to like, I want you to share, leave comments, click the bell so you can get notifications because the Locked On NBA Big Board crew is bringing you draft content five days a week marches around the corner which means march madness you got your conference tournaments you have the ncaa tournament and then once we get done with march it is draft season players will be signing with agencies and then the pre-draft process begins and then the nba draft it's, it's like it's coming soon like it's finally draft season we're about four months away from the nba draft it just seems like it's been forever you know, in October, November, even back in like August or September where you're talking about these prospects and people, unless you're like a diehard draft junkie, you're not really paying attention. But now fans are starting to realize that their team is not going to make the playoffs and they're trying to find like the right fit or the right guys that could be, that could come and help their team for next year. And this is where you can get all the information you need about the 2024 draft prospects right here at Locked On NBA Big Board. All right, before we get into this episode, I want to let you know that it is brought to you by Prize Picks because Prize Picks is the easiest and the most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. So go to prizepicks.com, use the promo code Locked On, L O C K E D O N, but it has to be in lowercase letters. Use the promo code again, prizepicks.com, Locked On NBA, lowercase letters, and you can get a first deposit match up to one hundred dollars all right let's talk about nikola topic so this 2024 nba draft class it is wide open we do not know what to expect it's unlike the last year the last two years even in years past there's no clear-cut number one i do think that there are five guys maybe six that have a chance some of it may be an outside chance but there is you know several guys that still believe they could be the number one pick in 2024 and Nikola Topic is in the mix he is one of the guys he's having a breakout season he was not someone that at this time last year we were talking about as a potential number one pick matter of fact just around this time last year give or take a week I saw a Topic or Topic I mean I'm probably gonna say the name multiple ways in this episode but I saw him at Basketball Without Borders in Salt Lake City. He was good. He didn't like stand out in like spectacular fashion. He was not the best player there. Maras Bazelis was the MVP. I thought Elliot Cadeau was really, really good. But Topic like took off. Like his game went to another level right after leaving Salt Lake City last year. Had an impressive run at the Adidas Next Generation tournament. Had like 40 point games to end up leading Serbia to the the U18 championships. Had like I mean, just a magnificent, remarkable spring and summer. And that carried into the season. He was playing for Mega MIS. He was averaging 18.6 points, 3.7 rebounds, and a little under seven assists per game. Most of his work came at the rack. I mean, he is a really, really good downhill driver. Great size at 6'6". Unfortunately, he got the call up to his childhood team which is known as Red Star. They played in the EuroLeague, got the call up, and then I think it was either the second or third game, left with a knee injury at the very beginning. I think it may have been either the first week of January or the last week in December. The prognosis was he was supposed to be out four to six weeks. So we're, we're getting almost to the eight-week mark. And so hasn't really been a lot of updates on his return other than he's running and he's doing some practicing. So hopefully he'll be back on the floor soon. But we're at this point where 
a guy that is the potential number one pick, or at least a top five pick, hasn't played in the last seven weeks. And his draft status is, is kind of like at a standstill. But from the games that he played, he definitely put himself in position to be the first pick call. So let me just give you a little bit of background. He is the son of a Serbian basketball player. He's 6'6", about 200 pounds. One of the youngest players in the draft was born August 10th, 2005. So he'll still be 18 on draft date. His position is point guard. I've seen some some sites list him as a shooting guard. To me, he's just absolutely best with the ball in his hands. And I say that because right now the outside shooting is a little bit of a concern, especially off the catch. But we'll get to that later on. But his offensive role is as a primary creator. That is where he's at his best as this big jumbo point guard that aggressively, and I had to put some emphasis on aggressively, aggressively gets downhill, attacks the rim. That's where he creates havoc and, and does so much damage. Defensively, I think his role on the defensive end is he'll be someone that will be guard wings just because he has the size to guard wings and he has a high IQ, but we'll get on the defense later on. So Topic is one of the youngest prospects in this draft. He'll be 18 on draft night, like I said. 6'6", big guard, but he has this excellent blend of pace, craftiness, basketball IQ, playmaking, and speed. Has great straight line speed, but he has mastered using angles to get to his sweet spot. Teams know that he wants to get downhill. That is his first choice, his second choice, and his third choice. You know he wants to get downhill. They sag off of him, but he still finds a way to get downhill. He is an advanced pick and roll playmaker, and he's a very good passer. Like, I think he is a very good passer. Uses his size to see over the top of defenses, but he has this knack to where he knows where the help is coming from, and he finds wide open shooters. He finds cutters. I wouldn't say he's like super flashy, but he does have a really good feel as a passer and playmaker. And for me, I'm a, a guy that I'm like anybody else. Like I have certain styles of play and certain players that I like. And I had jokingly said in a podcast a few weeks back that, you know, it's kind of like women. Some guys like them tall. Some like, um, you know, big. Some like them short. Some like them blonde. Some like them brunette. Some like them from different countries. So we all have different styles of players that we like. And for me, I like an aggressive, downhill, attacking point guard that can make reads. I mean, I like big-time shot makers, too. But Nikola Topic is he, – he fits the – the style of play that I like that I would like out of out of a point guard. I'd rather have like this an aggressive downhill slasher that creates opportunities over a game manager any day of the week and, and twice on Sunday. But like I said, Topic is a, a really good passer. He makes difficult passes. He sees a lot of things that players his age won't. Like he sees the game at a pretty high level. I mean, obviously he's been playing pro as an eighteen year old, so I mean, there are guys that are his age that are seniors, some even juniors in high school, if you want to be honest. But he's been playing professionally, so I think that he does have an advantage there. And he's able to create these opportunities, whether it's as a passer or a scorer, because he can beat his man off the dribble. And he's not beating his guy off the dribble with shaky ball handling or shifty ball handling, I should say. He's not like, I mean, like dancing with the ball. I mean, it's straight business. I'm going to give you a crossover. I'm going to just get downhill. I mean, a straight line drive. If he gets a pick, it's right to the rack. He doesn't, you know, the saying doesn't play with his food, doesn't waste dribbles. It is straight attack mode. And I like that about him. There are some guys that like pound the ball and kind of dance and they need to, you know, lure the defender to sleep to get a guy leaning one way to get to their advantage. Nope, not, not Nicola. It is straight downhill straight to the rack where it's a tough finish and he's it's crazy as he's not like finishing above the rim he is a very efficient finisher but it's all angles knowing how to use his body knowing how to shield off the the defender i mean he's just really good at finishing around the basket all right when we return i want to talk about a little bit more of his offensive strengths i want to cover his defense 
and then I want to cover some areas of concern. Stay tuned. All right, let's talk about prize picks. And if you're not familiar, you may ask, Raphael, what is prize picks? All I can say is prize picks is America's number one fantasy sports app. It has over 3 million members. It is the easiest and the most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. All you have to do is pick more or less than two to six players, and you're just predicting the stats. You're going against the stats, and all you have to do, pick two to six players. You're not playing against your buddies. You're not playing against some of the sharks or the bots. You're just playing against the stat projections, and you can let the winnings roll in. And it is demon time on prize picks. And with Demon Time, you can now win up to 100 times your money. You heard that right. 100 times your money with as little as four correct picks. So you can turn $10 into 1000 bucks. Demons and Goblins are the newest and most exciting way to play prize picks. Squares are marked with red demons or green goblins, and you get different payouts. You can now win up to 100 times your money with as little as four correct picks. Prize picks is easy, it's very simple to play. You can make and submit your picks in less than 60 seconds. You can get your money out fast, it is easy, and it has an enormous, enormous selection of players and stat types, and that is what makes prize picks the number one daily fantasy sports app. That is prizepicks.com slash locked on NBA, and you have to use the code in lowercase letters, and you can get a deposit match up to 100 all right second segment i still want to like dive a little bit more into what makes him a special prospect and it's all based off of how he knows how to get downhill get to the rack and collapse defenses and make plays for himself or others he's not gonna wow you athletically he's not jumping out the gym He's not like super, super fast. He's not like Rob Dillingham fast, not hiccup quick. Now he is fast in the open floor. He does turn rebounds into personal fast breaks. Like if you get a, him a long rebound, he's turning that into a personal fast break because his mindset is all about getting downhill. He embraces physicality. A lot of times he seeks out the contact. He initiates the contact so he can use that to create an advantage but he's a handful for individuals and teams when it comes to like getting to the basket. He has nice acceleration. He has his own version of the turbo button that he knows exactly when to use it, when not to use it. Again, it's a combination of size, craftiness, speed, and angles. And that's how he creates all his mismatches. And he's a good passer. Like I said, he finds cutters, but he's smart. He's savvy. He has a really high IQ. Now, the big concern is the outside shooting. Now, I don't think he's a bad shooter. I think he's one of these guys that he's been able to get downhill whenever he wanted throughout his career. And having a jumper hasn't necessarily been the primary focus of his development up until now. I think once he gets to the NBA, then he's going to have to become a better shooter. But he's a respectable shooter. Now, don't get me wrong. He's not a guy that... You can totally leave open. He likes to shoot jumpers off the dribble, at least three-pointers. Now, right now, he doesn't have like a, a pull-up jumper. And I think that is something that he'll need to work on and add. And I think for that, he'll need to add a little bit more pace. It's very interesting. Like, he has pace when it comes to like, like not playing too fast, not out of control, but I think he needs to add a little bit more pace to where he's able to stop and pop and shoot over smaller defenders when def defenders are backing up because everyone knows that he wants to get to the rack. But it's kind of like he has a little bit of tunnel vision when it comes to driving because he knows, like, once I get to the paint, I'm going to get a paint touch. Help is going to come, and once help comes, I'm going to kick it out to the open man. So I would like to see him add, like, a stop and pop jumper, a hesitation pull up, and be able to use his size to shoot over the top of smaller retreating defenders. When you look at like different scouting reports on him, that is like one of the most glaring weaknesses is his outside shooting. But I'm not too concerned about the shooting. I do think he's a respectable shooter, especially when it comes to shooting like, I wouldn't say like 
it is a pull up three, but it's like threes when the defender goes under the screen. I do think he's a threat there, but I would like to see him add the mid range pull up jumper. That way, it puts him on track to be a three level scorer because at least in his age group and in Europe, at least the levels in Europe that he's played on, he's mastered scoring in the paint. Now the next step for his development to make him a complete offensive player would be to add a mid-range pull-up and become a better shooter from three. Even off the catch, I do think that we've missed out on an opportunity when he's playing at Red Star and in the EuroLeague. We've missed out on the opportunity so far to see him play in a reduced role and play off the ball. He's sharing the floor or will share the floor with Milos Teodosic, who's like the most creative passer of all time, in my opinion. I mean, if, if you don't believe me, check it out. Just type in Milos Teodosic passing on YouTube, and you'll see some of the most creative passes that you will ever see. Like my son, he's going to watch Milos Teodosic highlight videos because Milos, whether it's underhand skip pass, I mean, just weird like behind the back passes in traffic that hits the three-point shooter in the shooting pocket so anyway with all that being said Topic is not going to play or not going to have like a crazy high usage the remainder of the season when he's playing for red star because one they're a euro league team they have a lot of talented players around him but it is a test for for me and other draft junkies and scouts to see how he plays in a bump up in competition but the three-point shooting is like i said it's not too much of a concern for me but i do think that there is room a significant room for for growth and, and development just because he's going to play off the ball some and he hasn't really had a lot of experience playing off the ball and shooting off the catch all right, when we return in the last segment, I'm going to talk about his defense and we're going to cover a little bit more of his weaknesses or areas of concern. Stay tuned. All right, the next segment is brought to you by BetterHelp because sometimes we need the opportunity to get some stuff off our chest, whether it's big or small. There are certain things that can really start to bother you or, or get to you. And it's very important for you to get that out, get it out your system, especially to someone who is unbiased in your life. So today I want to talk about how I feel about something. And you might even be thinking about the same thing this week. For me, I want to say what I'm going through, but one of my challenges is that I am a new father. I have a 19 month old son and I have a podcast that does about 200 episodes a year, and I have a newsletter that goes out to NBA teams and over 7,000 subscribers. What makes it challenging for me is that during the daytime, while my wife is at work and my son is in school, I am like constantly like working on my podcast, coming up with content for the podcast, and then I need to write my newsletter, but I need the right to make it engaging, but then in the evenings when my wife comes home from work, I want to spend time with my wife and my son because obviously I want to keep my family intact. But then that is when all the games are going on. And that is when I have to watch basketball. I have to know what I'm talking about. For me, it can be challenging trying to balance out this job that I absolutely love in career. In reality, I mean, the person I can talk to is my wife or, or friends and family, but there's not really anybody that I know that has the same exact schedule. There are people that I know that face the same challenges, but that's why better help can come in and, and basically be a great sounding board and therapy can be different for everyone. Most of us have bigger problems than our favorite sports team, even though there's some really, really passionate fans and, and the, um, the wins and losses take a toll on their life. And maybe that's why better help can be there for you. If you are thinking about starting therapy, give better help a try because it is entirely online and it is designed to be flexible and suited to your schedule. So visit betterhelp.com slash locked on NBA to get 10% off your first month. That is betterhelp.com slash locked on NBA to get 10% off your first month. All right, last segment. Let's talk about some weaknesses and areas of concern. So I, I mentioned the outside shooting is, is an area that he needs to improve on, and it is an area of concern because if he never develops into a reliable shooter, then I think that's going to limit how impactful he is when it comes to getting downhill. 
The next big area of concern is his defense. It is his defense. Because right now, he is not a very good defender. So you may say, why would you take a guy that is not a very good defender and is not a reliable shooter at this point in his career, number one? Well, that shows how wide open this draft class is, but it also shows how good of a passer and playmaker he is at 6'6", that makes me and some other teams and a lot of people overlook some of the deficiencies that he has. Now, on the defensive end, maybe it's because when he was playing for Mega MIS, he had such a huge role on the offensive end that he was pretty much like, I don't want to say carrying the team, that's a strong word, but he had such a high usage and an important role that maybe he didn't bring his best effort on the defensive end. And I think that's pretty common. When you look at some of the most high usage players in the NBA, their biggest concern is, especially like ball handlers, their biggest concern is they, they may not be great defenders. Some guys can turn it on when they need to. Some guys are pretty good in the playoffs, but during the regular season when they are carrying so much of the offensive load, their defense takes a back seat. That could be the case with, with um, Topic. Now, he is a high IQ guy. I do think that he has the tools and the length to at least be a solid defender. But as far as being like an aggressive point of attack defender, that is not him at this stage of his career. It is an area that he's going to have to really show teams that he can defend. And I think that once he starts or once he comes back and he's playing in the EuroLeague level with a condensed role, hopefully we'll get a chance to see if he can defend because now he's going to have to defend some high-level offensive players. You know, the EuroLeague is full of guys that were college stars, guys that had a cup of tea in the NBA, or some are, I mean, like, for example, Kimba Walker was an all-star. He's playing in the EuroLeague. And then you have your really high-level European players that represent their national team. So it is going to be a, a test to see how well he can defend on that level, and I think that could impact his draft stock. If he shows that he's capable then I think it's fine but if he's absolutely like horrid and getting blown by and can't defend then I, I do think that could have an impact especially if he's going to to be the number one pick all right let me just get into my notes here what I have as his strengths and then I get into his weaknesses and I'm just kind of recapping here good positional size at 6'6 aggressive downhill driver He's always looking to apply pressure at the rim, which is something that I, I love. He's an efficient finisher around the rim, and that's the thing. Like He's not playing above the rim. It's not like a Kyrie layup package. He's just efficient because he mastered angles and making sure the defender is stuck between his body and, and the rim. He has a good burst of speed. He loves to push, push the pace and play fast. That's when he's at his best, especially in transition. He initiates contact. He loves to play through contact. Is best used as a primary ball handler. He has drive and kick, dump off vision, but is also a very good reactionary passer when it comes to finding open shooters. Draws fouls at a high rate, and that goes to him being an aggressive downhill driver. Now, something I didn't mention is that if you put a smaller guard on him, he has the, the game and the mindset to punish and post up smaller guards. And when he posts up smaller guards, he is able to draw double teams, which can lead to open shots. I don't know if you watched the World Cup this past summer. And you saw, like, in Europe, they still post up. Whether it's a, a one, a two, three, or four, or five, they post up. But one of the things that European teams do well that I really like and love is that they don't always post up to get a post basket. Sometimes the post-up is to draw a double team to create an open shot. And Topic has a very good understanding of posting up a smaller guard, being patient, waiting to draw the double, and then that's when he's able to find shooters. So I think that is an added weapon that hopefully we'll get a chance to see because I love post-play. And hopefully the NBA brings back like the post-up point guards and wings because if you can pass and you can post up, then I think you can create a lot of different mismatches. In my notes, I also put that he is a respectable three-point shooter off the dribble. Now, the numbers and the eye tests may be on totally different pages, but I think that he's respectable. And he finishes with both hands, loves to go to his left, 
and he has good pace, burst, and understanding how to manipulate ball screens. All right, now the weaknesses or the areas for improvement is because he's such an aggressive downhill driver, he does have a tendency to play out of control from time to time. He can't pick up some charging fouls because, again, defenses know where his bread is buttered or where he wants to get to, and which is in the paint. He's not as turnover prone as he used to be. When I first saw him about two years ago at the Adidas Next Generation Tournament in Belgrade, Serbia, he averaged like six turnovers per game in that particular tournament. He was good. He scored the ball. He was efficient at the rim. He racked up assists, but he was turning the rock over. And it wasn't like crazy wild passes. It was just more so picking up charges, and he was very predictable. I think he's improved over the last two years in adding a little bit of craftiness and learning how to avoid picking up a bunch of charges. But he does pick some up from time to time. Now, he's capable, but he is a streaky shooter. He's very streaky. Now, he's, he's not a guy that, that you can just say is a non-shooter you can leave open. I think you have to guard him, but he can get hot and then he can be cold. So adding consistency will open up just different levels to his game. And then I mentioned before, he doesn't have like the greatest physical tools in a sense because he lacks vertical pop around the rim. Now, he is fast and he does have burst. But it's more so like a crafty burst. It's not like jitterbug quick, but there is burst and speed there. But when it comes to like playing above the rim and finishing over guys, that's not his game. But despite that, I mean, he's a better finisher than some guys that are like phenomenal athletes. And I think some of that is because, like I said, the angles, he uses both hands and he's just mastered like finishing and traffic. And then he gambles a lot on defense. And he is a single effort defender. So that's something, like I said, I'm going to be paying attention to as we go down the final stretch, the last stretch of this season. He is coming off an injury. I don't know how they're going to play him. Are they going to ease him back into the lineup? Because he doesn't have a lot of experience with the team. They brought him in to add some depth. But it's going to be interesting to see how the rest of the season plays off and see if he can maintain his draft stock. Because before the injury, he was arguably the hottest name in draft circles. Well, that wraps up this episode of Locked On NBA Big Board. This is the case for Nikola Topic as the number one pick. Let me know what you think. I know for some people, they think that he is the best player in this draft, and some don't. But let me know what you think. Again, this is the case for Nikola Topic as the number one pick. I am Rafael Barlow, and in the next episode, I'm going to talk about Zachary Risache. A guy that several scouts believe is the top player in the 2024 NBA draft. So I'll share my thoughts and make a case for the Frenchman. That will be the second French prospect. And I guess my first three are international and, and hail from Europe. So I do have a couple American prospects that I think can be the number one pick. But anyway, once again, it's Rafael Barlow and I am out.